Hey everyone, Anthony LaBella here with EXP Realty. Uh, with me today, I have Michael Sajace from Envoy Mortgage. Uh, and I just wanted to make this video to clarify uh, what's been going on in the news. I'm sure all of you have seen a lot of these uh, sensational headlines on the internet, as well as on television and news programs talking about uh, people with good credit paying more for mortgages uh, than, you know, people with bad credit and, you know, poor behaviors being rewarded. But what I wanted to do is have Mike on to clarify some of these details because we really want to avoid a lot of the politics and the rhetoric and sensationalism and just really bring to you, bring uh, to all of you the facts as to what exactly is going on. Stick around to the end of this video because we are going to talk about ways to hack, if you will, uh, some of these uh, rate changes or possibly avoid these changes altogether. So maybe we'll start out, Mike, uh, with a brief introduction uh, about yourself, and then maybe talk about, uh, you know, and then maybe jump into some of these details. Hey, so, hey guys. So, yep, Mike Sajace, Envoy Mortgage. We have a local branch right here in Merrick, New York, in Long Island, um, and definitely want to elaborate on some of these changes. Now, LLPA stands for Loan Level Price Adjustments. And, we, yeah, and that's what's that's what's actually being changed. These so-called LLPAs. Maybe you could talk about what LLPAs are, and uh, and then I guess go from there. Exactly. So when a bank determines a a client's or a borrower's interest rate, it's based off of two main factors. If we were to simplify it, those two factors are the percentage they're financing, which is called their loan to value ratio. For us, that you know, uh, for the regular person, you're thinking things like how what percentage am I putting down. That's how a bank determines your loan to value. For example, if you're putting 20% down, you're an 80% LTV, which is loan to value. The other factor that banks look at to price out an interest rate for you is your credit score. Now, these are tiers that banks categorize borrowers based on their, their median credit score. So not their highest score, not their lowest score out of the three, the median score. And the three bureaus we use are TransUnion, Experian, and Equifax. Now, LLPAs, loan level price adjustments, have always existed. This is not a new thing. But what the government has done, what Fannie Mae has done, is they've changed them. And they've changed them in the past, and there's nothing to say they won't change them again in the future. Now, we're here today to talk about what those changes are and what they mean to somebody who's in the market to buy a home. Now, some of the things uh, that we're hearing is that it, people with lower credit scores are being rewarded, and people with higher credit scores are being punished. That uh, is really not the case. The way these loan level price adjustments are, it still makes sense. Um, it still benefits you to have a larger down payment. It still benefits you to have a higher credit score. They've now increased the top credit tier where uh, 740 and above was the top category with the, the old loan level price adjustments. And now 780 and above is uh, the top category with the loan level price adjustments. In fact, with the old adjustments, if you had a 780 credit score, you actually wouldn't benefit as much compared to some of the new adjustments. So in that respect, you're actually benefiting from this more. Um, there's definitely been some changes on the lower end of the credit score spectrum. For people with credit scores under 680, they've lessened some of the adjustments. Now, don't get me wrong, some of these adjustments on the old LLPAs were very heavy, uh, meaning significant uh, increases in interest rates for borrowers with less than 680 credit scores. Now, people with less than 680 credit scores will still have an increased rate compared to somebody with a 780 credit score, but it won't be as drastic of a difference. And if you look at some of the grids, you'll see that. Okay. Quick question, Mike. Are these LLPA fees uh, due in one lump sum at closing, or are they rolled in, like, are they baked into the interest rate that a consumer would be paying? 99% of the time, they're baked into the interest rate. So if you have uh, a higher adjustment because your credit score is lower and you're putting down a lower down payment, it would just mean you end up having a higher rate because this adjustment is built into that. Now, okay. Someone could opt to pay them out of pocket, but most people don't. They just understand that with a lower credit score and with lower down payments, their interest rate would be adjusted higher than, you know, obviously the opposite scenario. Okay. Um, so I think, uh, you know, one of the main points here, and I'm just going to quickly share a grid of the, of the loan level uh, price adjustments uh, that were made. Um, and so everyone can really see 
what the changes are. Um, so let me know if you could see that. Okay, yeah, I see that. Um, so a lot of these sensational headlines are basically saying that people with good credit who do the right thing are getting penalized and people with poor credit are paying lower mortgage rates. But the, in actuality, the changes here are the changes from the previous rates. But here, if you look at the total, uh, the total rates, you can still see here that people with poorer credit are still paying significantly more than people with good credit. So one of the points, you know, I think we both want to make here is that, um, you know, this is not a reason to go out and destroy your credit or miss credit card payments or stop your car payments. Uh, people with good credit are still paying significantly less than people with poor credit. Yep, you're 100% right in that. Um, as you can see, based on the grid, it's still don't do anything to hurt your credit score. You still want to get your credit score as high as possible. If anything, with the new adjustments, you want to. It's important to know if you had, let's say, a 740 credit score or 750 credit score before, and thought that that was the highest you needed to get. Which, again, with the old adjustments, it was. It's super important to know what's going on with your credit. Know about it early on, and know what tricks, what tips you can use to your advantage to improve your credit score while while you're out there looking for a home. Because now, with a 780 and above credit score, there's actually more benefits to you know getting your score. Whereas in the past, it just well, as you, if you had over a 740, it didn't make a difference. You could have had a 780, an 800, a 740. It didn't matter. Now it matters more. So for people out there with good credit, and don't get me wrong, 740 and 750 are great scores. But if it's a matter of maybe paying a trade line a little bit lower or adding uh, additional pieces of credit or knowing what types of credit to be added to your credit profile, those are small and easy things that can very quickly improve your credit score. And you can use the time that you're shopping for a home to your advantage, where now, by the time you find a home with your realtor, your credit is as high as possible and you're benefiting as much as you possibly can from these new adjustments. Okay, great. And uh, just going back to this table here, which are the changes from the previous rates, um, you know, there are a few hacks, if you will, uh, to maybe avoiding, not com maybe completely avoiding or at least diminishing some of the impact of these changes. So as you can see here, uh, for, you know, uh, 80 to 85 percent down, I'm sorry, uh, excuse me, 15 to 20 percent down, um, people with 740 credit scores or higher, 740 to 759, their increase is 75 basis points or three quarters of 1%. But you know, maybe if you put less down, you can then only pay, uh, have an increase of half a percent. Or if you put a little more down, maybe 21% down, you can only have a three eighths percent increase here. You're 100% so, you're right with that. Um, if you do decide to put less down to just get a better interest rate, that's definitely something you can do. As you can see, if you start going to 10% or 5% down with the same 740 credit score, the adjustments are reduced each tier each uh, percentage that you go lower with your down payment. The good thing is if you end up doing something like that to manipulate the rate, you can always prepay the loan. The loans have absolutely no prepayment penalty. And you have the option to recast the loan down the road, which would actually reamortize the monthly payment based on a larger principal reduction down the road. Okay, excellent. That's, that's, that's good news. And I think some other, um, some other ways to avoid these rate increases, rate, excuse me, rate increases, um, uh, maybe you can clarify some of this as well, but if you have, from what I understand, and correct me if I'm wrong, if you make less than 120% of the area median income, you could probably waive all of those loan level price adjustments for first time home buyers. And I'm pretty sure that if you make less than 80% of the area median income, you don't have to pay any of these LLPAs, whether your credit is good or bad. Yeah. Uh, can you maybe uh, expand on that? Yep. There are two programs. The Fannie Mae program is called Home Ready. The Freddie Mac program is called Home Possible. Both of these programs have income limitations that are based on the area median income for that particular geographical location. And if you qualify for these programs as a first-time buyer, you would avoid these loan level price adjustments altogether. Excellent. Mike, thank you so much for uh, providing some clarity to this uh, hotly uh, discussed topic. And I think just as we maybe wrap this up, uh, again, uh, the, the 
the drastic changes are in the adjustments to last year's rates, but not in the total payment. So keep your credit, you know, always work to get your credit score to be the highest it can possibly be. And you will still enjoy a lower mortgage rate than people with poor credit. Exactly. Um, Michael, is there anything else you maybe want to share before we uh, wrap it up? I mean, that's pretty much it. The big takeaway there is, you know, making sure your credit score is as high as you can get it is obviously going to benefit you um, now more than ever. Now with the new adjustments, more than with the old adjustments. So if anyone has any questions, Mike Sajace from uh, Envoy Mortgage. And thank you again, Anthony, for having me on.